You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to A Little Kink Goes a Long Way with host Roxy Benson. Roxy is here to share and live the truth about relationships and show you how to bring sacred expression to any relationship. So now, welcome the host of A Little Kink Goes a Long Way, Roxy Benson. Hi, kidness and kinksters. Welcome to A Little Kink Goes a Long Way. I'm your host, Roxy Benson, and you're listening to us on BBM Bold Brave Media, um, dot com, and also you can listen on Tune In Radio in the car or on your smartphone. Tonight we're going to be talking about um, the submissive experience and uh, and what that what that means to to Roxy and Sacred Kink and Honorable Kink and. Um, for new people coming in, um, coming into this community, being submissive does not mean that you automatically are going to just be treated like shit by someone and they're going to hurt you. That is not the way it works. And if you meet somebody like that, get away from them. Um, and so I'll just, you know, there's a lot of people who have no idea what BDSM is, and they're coming into it from Fifty Shades of Grey. So what this, what kink is, is not, and what that movie is uh, portraying is not sacred kink. You know, it shows this rich billionaire guy who has his sexual appetite his his kinks and he meets a woman that he wants to possess and turn into his submissive and she's not kinky she's not into it and that's not that's not true kink that's not sacred kink true sacred kink is it looks like this um you know i went i went to a class on Saturday, a uh, class with my girlfriend, um, someone I date. I date a woman who identifies as a masochist, and she's a submissive. And um, she likes pain. It's fun for her, or what I would say, intense pressure. And so this this person that was teaching the class, um, I told a story on the show last week about... Um, a couple I had, had I had judged this person, um, and he's a sadist. But I'm watching this class, and it was what's really funny is um, the woman who was his model, the demonstration model. Um, I know her from the community. She's really powerful, and she's definitely a submissive. But she, when she was talking about um, the experience she was going to have with this sadist, these pressure points, she, she didn't call it pain at all. She called it sensation. Now the, the male, the sadist, he, he got off from calling it pain. He got off from saying, you know, hurt and all that. But, but a, a true sadist, you know, they want an honorable true sadist wants to hurt people that are, you know, like it. And, um, and so I watched, as the class started, I watched, um, the, the woman, her face and, and, um, you know, it was delight and curiosity and interest and, and, um, 
there wasn't any expression on her face from the whole, you know, no matter where he demonstrated these pressure points that said she wasn't having fun, that she wasn't consenting, that she wasn't doing exactly what she wanted to do. So I want to talk about a true submissive holds all the power. A submissive, a submissive who is going to submit to someone, if they're, if this person is an honorable dominant, there's going to be negotiation and you're, you're not, if the dominant is worthy of you, you're not going to be asked to do anything you don't want to do. You don't like. And, um, I, uh, I play sexually both as a dominant and a submissive and in the, we call that a switch. And, um, I'm, but I, I am not, I would not say I'm a submissive. I enjoy playing the role of a submissive, a sexual submissive with powerful and trusted dominance, dominance that I trust. And, but I'm not, you know, I don't have the same, uh, just beingness of a true submissive. And I'm, you know, I met true submissives and, um, you know, I date two women who are both submissives and one of them is not a service submissive. And one of them is a service service submissive. So one, one of them wants to serve in all, always, not just sexually, you know, she t cleans up, she, you know, carries my stuff. She takes care of, she takes care of all that kind of stuff. And the other one um, is just a sexual submissive. Both are fun. Um, and both of these women are completely different, completely different personalities. Um, the service submissive that I date is she um, dates both men and women. The just sexual submissive that I went to the class with, she only dates women. And she used to identify as a lesbian, but I think now she identifies as trans. And uh, my other girlfriend identifies as queer. So if you feel that you um, are naturally submissive or you want to submit sexually, then it's about it's about finding somebody, one, that's worthy of your trust because you're trusting someone. You know, I've had, I've allowed people to tie me up, blindfold me, and gag me and use weapons on me. And I've never been abused. I've never been harmed. I've never been, um, I've never had anything done to me as a submissive that I didn't want. Um, a couple of times, what, my dominant partner, when we've been playing and he got a little carried away, you know, a little excited, um, he bit me in a place that I don't want to be bit. But that was that was a learning opportunity because it was the first time he ever bit me there. It was on my inner thigh and it was a learning opportunity for both of us because I like, well, maybe I, maybe I like, maybe I'll like it in a different spot. And so I, you know, I do like being bit in certain places, but not all places. So if you're playing with someone and they like to bite and you don't like to be bitten, then they don't bite you. That, that's the, that's the rule. Um, now there are some people I met a, a submissive and, um, her, the way she, the submissive she is, she wants to just have the dominant take control and do stuff to her without telling her what that is. And that takes a lot of trust. When you, we come back, we'll be talking some more about what a submissive is and what that trust entails. I'm your host, Roxy Benson on a little kink goes a long way. Boldbravemedia.com. <laughs> 
Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Horses, mystical, present, past, and future, all in one. Wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Hi, welcome back to A Little Kink Goes a Long Way. I'm your host, Roxy Benson, and you're listening on Bold Brave Media. I have uh, Jess on the phone. Jess is a submissive, and um, she's going to share some of her experience with you. Um, Jess, would you like to, uh, I'm going to ask you a question, but you can introduce yourself. First question I want to ask you to answer is, what does being submissive mean to you? And if you want to introduce yourself and say the city where you live, and then answer that question. Sure. I'm Jess, and I live in San Francisco. And as a submissive, and what submissive means to me, it's basically being able to really trust people with who I am. Um, I'm a very dominant person in my lifestyle, and I'm a type A personality, so I'm pretty much always in control. And it's allowing myself to be free with someone that I, I sincerely trust and that we negotiate that space. We talk about what's going on both between them and I and also basically what I'm looking for. And what it comes down to for me is a really trusting, caring relationship with someone that I truly love. Have you ever been asked by a dominant to do something you didn't want to do? Yes, I have. But it's also been a conversation. You know, we stopped. And I use red, yellow, and green, or more or less, depending on. And red, yellow, and green, uh, for me, red is complete stop. And yellow is let's talk about it. And green is like, let's go. And when it comes to something that I don't like, I say red. And that means let's talk about this and let's stop that for a second because it means we're negotiating the space. What what would you say is the most empowering thing about being a submissive for you? For me, it's really being able to give up control of someone I truly <laughs> trust. You know, our world is kind of difficult. And there's a lot of different people out there and different dynamics. And in the bedroom and also in life, we're looking for people who are really going to respect our boundaries and to understand who we are intellectually, emotionally, and sexually. So I'm able to give up intellectual, (laughs) emotional, and sexual all at the same time, and that's a really big deal. And for me, it allows me to have a freedom that I wouldn't have in the outside world. What does that type of surrender feel like? It's amazing. It's like, basically, it's like saying to someone, hey, I trust you with everything about me, and I trust that you're going to take care of me on every level. 
And I appreciate and I'm grateful to be able to give that control up, but also to be able to know that I'm honored and blessed by that person, that person being with me. And some, some submissives are sexual submissives and some submissives are service submissives and some are both. Um, how would you describe the type of submissive you are? I would say I'm both. I like to take care of people and make sure they, you know, have what they need with having drinks all the way through towels. But also, for me, it's also talking with them about, you know, how how we can really understand each other and really respect each other. And it's a, it's a very, very deep place for me um, because it takes a lot for me to trust and open up. I think for my personal pers- my personality, I'm very open usually and very open to the person. But when it comes to my self space, I'm able to just be quiet <laughs> and take a moment and let them do the driving. You know, it's like here, take the wheel, and I trust you with my body, my mind, and my soul. Uh, what is it, something that you thought you wouldn't like? And you tried it because you trusted the relationship and you found out you liked it. <laughs> That's an awesome question. Uh, <laughs> I would say fourth orgasm. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> it's like, hey, here's this amazing opportunity to just let yourself go and let the other person have sincere control of your body. And it is awesome. <laughs> Would you tell our listeners what forced orgasm is in case they don't know? Okay, so basically it's having your dom take either their fingers or a toy or whatever y'all choose, or whatever they choose, actually. The dom makes the decision. It's really hot to have that happen. And for them to basically make you orgasm over and over and over again. You can't even see straight. And even if you can't see straight, they go a little bit further. (laughs) It's really amazing. It's complete release and complete giving them, you know, the control of who you are and knowing that they're going to be amazing on every level to you and honor who you are as much as you honor them. (laughs) Well, forced orgasms (laughs) is a fun way to play, but... Uh, there's also orgasm denial. Have you played with someone who uh, participated in orgasm denial, and what was that like? Absolutely. I found that also. <laughs> Those two on the ends of the spectrum are incredible, both of them, and I recommend. Uh, <laughs> so orgasm denial uh, basically means that you get to that point it's kind of like edging. You're almost there, and then you're not allowed to come until they tell you. And being able to give up that control for your body and being able to hold back that orgasm makes it a thousand times more intense. It's just like, I would actually even say, like, orgas- orgasms are also very intense, and denial orgasms are just as intense. I, to me, they're... They, they're both amazing, and <laughs> between mind, body, and pleasure, yeah. <laughs> so you would you say it makes the orgasm more intense if you hold it and deny it? And is that is that a hard thing to do for you? For me, it's giving up the control of me. So it's listening to them tell me when I'm able to come with them and for them. I mm. love giving up that control and being connected yeah. to that. It really, yeah. it's entirely makes, it makes the room spin. <laughs> yeah. And it's really fun and beautiful. And whenever you actually get to the orgasm, you don't even know how much you're coming. <laughs> well, that sounds like a fun thing to do. Um, it, in, kink there it's a very large topic and we'll we'll Mm -hmm. um talk about that more when you come back so can you stay with us for another segment caller we're going to have a commercial and then we'll come back um my name is roxy benson i'm your host on a little kink goes a long way and you are listening to us 
on boldbravemedia.com and you can find us on TuneIn Radio too and listen in your car. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. Hi, welcome back to A Little Kink Goes a Long Way. I'm your host, Roxy Benson, and you're listening on Bold Brave Media. We are talking to Jess from San Francisco, and she is sharing her submissive experience. I'm going to ask Jess a question, uh, a question that I is a great question for all of us to consider. Um, Jess, what? how did you own your sexual expression because being kinky and submissive is not necessarily mainstream. How did you do that? I was very lucky that my first girlfriend actually opened me up and we were not extremely sexually active. We were more like, here, let me spank you and see what happens. And we both ended up having orgasms storing it. And during that period of time, she realized she was dominant, and I realized that I was submissive. And I really wanted to balance, Um, and so did she. So she was a bit quiet in her lifestyle choices, and I was a bit loud. And having that kind of sexuality and connection was like, wow, this is amazing. This is the other side of my coin, right? And I flip it over and rock and roll. And her and I had such a respect and love for each other that we read a lot of books. And we saw a lot of magazines, and we wanted to try a lot of different stuff. So we talked about things that seemed interesting to us both, and we did a, a BDSM checklist together. And we really looked at it and said, oh, okay, these are things we both like, and then we pursued those. Where did you find your, the resources um, to learn about kink and well, I actually, we saw, I mean, we, this is kind of before online, we went to Half Price Books and picked up uh, <laughs> Through the Roses, Send Me the Thorns, <laughs> a BDSM primer, <laughs> which we found in the card catalog at a library. <laughs> and we, we bought it, <laughs> and we read it, and it was an amazing introductory to different different kinds of kink and BDSM, spanking, some tot, you know, different kinds of rope play, um, gagging, even like mm-hmm. a little bit of choking here and there, and, and that was like kind of our introduction. And then beyond so that, it, when, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying, so it was a relationship 
that gave you permission oh, yeah. to explore your sexual expression a sexual expression that's not me that's not what the patriarchy is telling us that women should be doing <laughs> so, um yeah, so exactly. I, I, I felt safe you know i could talk with her about anything and i also had men too both masters and, and mistresses on the same level and i felt safe with them it was not just an erotic pursuit it was an intellectual pursuit it was a conversation. It was a no- negotiation on both of our terms of what we were comfortable with and what we wanted to be part of. And the orgasms were plenty full beyond that. So, <laughs> so she was your first uh, female dominant partner. Um, tell me about your first male dominant partner experience with uh, an experienced dominant Oh, yeah. Um, So I was very fortunate to get a very, very wonderful boyfriend who had been in the scene for a little bit. And he introduced me to rope play and a little more bondage. So more tying up, which is a bit, you know, more intense. And it's a conversation you have like, hey, can I put these handcuffs on you? Can I use this rope to put this handcuff behind your head? And everything between him and I was was very consensual. And that Mm -hmm. made me feel really safe. And that conversation allowed us to go into places of, hey, here's these three toys. Let me try this. And then there's a one to one to ten. So the one is the lowest all the way up to the ten. And he would just continue going until we got to wherever I needed to stop. And then we talk about it. And whatever felt like the best one, we went for for each of the play toys we had. So it's always conversation, always consent and always a negotiation before and then a conversation afterward. So you like this or you didn't like that. But you want to, like, they always enhanced my sexuality, and I always wanted to enhance who they were, too. It was was definitely a mutual connection. Can you tell me something you, someone introduced you to that they tried with you and you thought, wow, that's really cool. And then you shared that with someone else. <laughs> Wax play for sure. So I'm uh, so not tell, a tell us again, Tell us what that is first. What's wax play? Okay. Wax, wax play with candles. You basically light the candles up and then they pour wax on different parts of your body. So it can go all the way from just your feet, all the way up your legs, to like your intimate areas, as I call it, my bikini and my wonderful boobies, and your shoulders, your back, your neck, all the sensitive areas, places that you have. And wax oil is basically using low temperature candles. <clears throat> They're specific. You don't want to use the ones from the grocery store. That's a bad idea. Uh, so you get low temperature candles, <clears throat> and you're able to go ahead, light them up, and let them drip for like three or four minutes. And that drip goes onto the body, and it rolls all over the body. And it's a little messy, <laughs> so we didn't know the first time. We didn't put anything down. <laughs> it's an experience, but uh, you don't want to ruin your sheet or your bedding. So get a nice little, like, either plastic or garbage bag or a sheet that you're not going to use again. And you pour that wax all over this place, placing it on the body. I like my nipples done. I like my clit done. I like my bum done and my back. And what happens with that is the sensation of that heat pulls through the body. And most of the time you're tied up, so you have the bonded sensation while you're giving up all the control while someone is pouring wax in your body and coating you in a second skin. And that eroticism flows through everything from your head to your toes, no matter where it's put. And I did the same thing with someone else, and it was incredible to see not just the wax slow down, because it's beautiful, but also the way people interact with it, like what their reaction is and the orgasms that come from it. And when you peel it off the body, you see that imprint of both your sex right there, and it's just amazing and beautiful and very erotic. <laughs> mm. Well, it sounds pretty fun. I try, I you know, I went to a wax play class and tried it a little bit, but... um. Um, you know, I have certain body parts that are, um, sensitive. I call them my clits all over my body and wax play might be fun on those places. So I'm open to trying that too. 
When we come back, <laughs> highly recommend. We'll, we'll uh, we're gonna ask a couple more questions of just talk a little bit more about the submissive space. What a, what subspace is? On a little kink goes a long way with your host Roxy Benson, boldbravemedia.com. And if you want to listen on on in your car, download the TuneIn Radio app and find us there. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with disabilities and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Welcome back to A Little Kink Goes a Long Way on BoldBraveMedia.com. I'm your host, Roxy Benson, and I have a very fun submissive on the call tonight. Her name is Jess. She lives in San Francisco, and I'm going to ask her a few fun questions, a few more fun questions. My next question for Jess is, do you have a fetish? Hmm. Yes, actually, I do. <laughs> I have a couple of them. <laughs> so I'm a latex fetishist, which means that I really like rubber and latex. I like to wear it because it's really tight and it smells amazing to me. And putting it on makes me feel like I'm putting on another skin. So you can be anyone in latex. You can be Catwoman all the way through, you know, the, the, the very sexy girl with her bum sticking out at like a BDSM fair like Fulton Street Fair and it's just a really amazing amazingly open thing to wear in my opinion because it's just so you can see everything there's nothing hidden in latex from nipples all the way down to pussy you you, you have it all and it's really hot to wear it's also hard to take on and off <laughs> but it's really good to do um, the other one that I would have is spanking I love to be spanked and I can definitely have orgasms from being spanked, and I love the lower part of my bum spanked. I like hair pulling, and I actually really like choking because I think it's really hot. And I can do all of that with or without sex and have many orgasms from both of it. Indeed you can. (laughs) Indeed you can. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Now, so do you orgasm easily? Oh, yeah. So I'm very was it fortunate. always like that for you, or is that something that happened more recently with kink? Um, well, actually, the woman that I was with, my very first introduction to sex was kink. So the woman that I was with, um, like I said, we went to the, <laughs> to the library, looked it up, and, and I went to half night books and picked up the book. Um, her and I talked about it, and 
she actually didn't never penetrated me until uh, almost seven months into the relationship with her fingers. So she would just spank me and pull my hair and have me suck on her nipples and please her until I came. And those are the things that allowed we read about it. And then it also allowed me to know how my submissive side worked. I love to please people. I love to see them come and I love coming with them. And pain is pleasure for me and pleasure is pain, but I also enjoy pleasure in general. I just think it's really incredible to be able to have an openness about your body and let people see everything and let your partner be so intimate with you that you know and trust them and that spanking just makes you come all over everything. <laughs> is there, a, an, an, it, be, yeah. besides your ass, spanking your ass, is there another body part that, that, you like to receive more intense sensation on and that, and you also orgasm. Oh. Yes. Besides. I'm a penetration person. Um, I like, I love having my pussy. I'm, I, I'm not face. talking about inside. I'm, I'm talking about outside. Oh yeah. No. Outside. Yeah. Put pussy lips are definitely my way to go. I love having pussy lips left along with my bum. Bum first to warm me up. Pussy lips afterward. I'm pretty sensitive about everything else. I usually don't go for the boobies or anything like that, but it's also an option, and I highly recommend it. I and sometimes the lower back, depending so on. So you the don't have of, horny um, nipples? Is that what you're saying? Eh, not really. <laughs> My boobies are real sensitive. <laughs> they like um, light snacky. Do, do you communicate that with snack. your dominance that you don't like your nipples pinched? Absolutely. Like the negotiation space before you even get to the point where they're spanking you or, you know, holding you down and pulling your hair while spanking you. You want to talk with everybody and make sure that they know, hey, I have really sensitive boobies or really sensitive nipples. And these things are going to be more painful than pleasure. But it's not going to keep me in a space where I'm really connected to what we're doing and allow me to let go. Because, you know, what do you like done to your down. breasts? What what sensation okay. do you like there, if any? Um, I like when people actually hold the whole breast and then push their palm down on the nipple, uh, pushing the breast inward on each side. And I love silky stuff on it. I do occasionally like a little whipping here and there, not with a single tail, but more with a flogger. Um, mm-hmm. And okay, if it's going to be using a nice um, wooden tool on my bum and my pussy, like my pussy lips, then you can use one or two on my boobies after we have a nice little start up there. It's a good balance. <laughs> Are there any other body parts that you like um, a more intense sensation on? You You said you like it on your ass, your pussy lips. Is there anywhere else on your body that you like in it? And, and sensation of impact, an impact sensation. Oh, yeah. So upper back, like, you have to be careful because you want to hit, like, right, right uh, above the tailbone. You don't want to hit the tailbone. The tailbone hurts too much, and it's not very good for anybody. And then inner thighs, to be spread, like, have your, your legs spread open while someone's smacking your inner thighs. It's an amazing flogger or, like, any sort of paddle. It's really hot and really fun. And that allows a lot of that wet pussy juice to come while they're hitting that or coming and then they can go ahead and hit your pussy and you can come from there. (laughs) What's the most interesting toy or tool that you had used on you and you were like, wow, you can pervert that? (laughs) Um, (laughs) well, I would say a really amazing little candle that was (laughs) battery operated right around my pussy and my bum. I never knew how much that intensity while fingers were on my thighs and breath was on my neck could make me so turned on that I was leaving like a giant wet spot on that on that bed. It was very hot. <laughs> Did you say okay, can, you had a candle? A tiny little battery operated candle. Battery operated candle. 
Well, when we come back, maybe you can tell our reader, our listeners what you did with that. All right. You can also call in and ask questions. You can ask questions of me or our caller. This is a we show, not a me show. So when we welcome your calls at 866-451-1451, boldbravemedia.com. A little kink goes a long way with Roxy Benson and my guest, Jess. Patricia Fayweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife, which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes. And she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Welcome back to A Little Kink Goes a Long Way on BoldBraveMedia.com. I am your host, Roxy Benson. We have a few more minutes with our fun submissive, Jess. And uh, she is going to answer that question that I asked before the break. What is something, some kind of tool or toy that was used on you that you thought, wow, I didn't know you could pervert Mm -hmm. that. Well, I would say that I assume (laughs) the candle, the little candle with the wonderful light, the little ones that you get that have the battery in them. Because I, of course, already talked about candle flame. That was really hot. What's the shape of this candle you're talking about, this little candle? I need to know the shape so I can... Hold it in my mind. Mm-hmm. It's a tiny little circle, about three inches, and it has a fake little flame. And you can get them on Amazon really easily. <laughs> and that little flame touches all along your inner thighs, all on those pussy lips, right along the clit. And it's just right there along the entire area of your, of everything that's awesome. <laughs> Well, it's one of those little tiny tea light yeah. candles. And so they, yeah, you're, the dominant was using the point of the little flame to create sensation on your skin. Yeah, sensation, but also a little wet pattern. <laughs> <laughs> well, who knew candles could be kinky? Now there's lots of there's things to do with I, I I can think of a lot of candle stuff. You talked about wax, and um, one thing you know I have the top of my feet are very sensitive. And when you were talking about candle play and wax play, I thought I, that might be fun to to drizzle um, wax on the top of my foot. Oh. So when we're thinking about these kinds of sensations, yeah, I think it, there's some people have places they like on their body to create these sensations. And you don't know 
you know, who they are and what they are. Uh, or you don't know until you try it. So try it. We have another caller. So oh. Jess, thank you so much for um, contributing <laughs> such a wonderful part of our show. I'm going to take this other call, and you're welcome to stay and listen. And thank you again, Jess from San Francisco. Hi, caller. How are you? Hi. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Rocky. How, do we... How are you? Is this... Is it? Who is this? This is, this is Sherry. Yay, Sherry, you're here. Okay, thank you so much. Hi. I was telling telling uh, Jess, my girlfriend, that you were going to call if you could because you work. So welcome. Sherry is a submissive. Sherry is a submissive that uh, she doesn't call it pain. She calls it sensation. And so do I. And so when she called it that, I was like, yes, that's. Uh, that's what I want to do. I want to have Sherry come and talk about that. So I was at a class with Sherry, a class on pressure points, and um, the instructor was this dominant, and he needed to call it pain. He needed to say the words hurt because that's what turned him on. And it, I, it was so fun watching you with him because I know the kind of status he is. And yeah. that he, he, but you, you're like loving what he was doing to you. And, he, you know, and he's like, oh, you're submissive. They'll hate it. Oh, they'll hate it. They really won't like this. And everything he said they won't like is like I watched your face. And it was just the expression on your face. <laughs> I want to create that expression on my submissive's face. So tell us about submission. <laughs> what does that mean for you? Um, I, I, I feel like that... Um... It's just really about uh, expressing. There's just so many different ways to express, um, you know, pain, pleasure. There's a lot of different words that people use. Just the vocabulary is so vast. Um, like one of the things that when he was saying pain, and you're saying this is going to hate it and things like that, I was thinking about how there's so much slang in our language and like how like right now one of the popular things that people say is you're killing it. Like if you're doing really good, doing a great job, you're killing it. And I just think that's really funny. And so really it's all about communicating. And, and, you know, when it really comes down to it, if you're not liking what someone's doing, then you tell them and then you, you know, use your safe words and things like that. So I think it's really just about like self-expression and being expressive. Um, you know, as far as the language goes. Um, and, you know, if you don't feel like you're communicating with someone, then that's not something you play with, or you get better at the communicating and, and ask them, like, well, what do you mean by that? Things like that. So, um, have, have you ever had to stop a scene to uh, better the communication? And then after you did that, did the scene get better? Um, I've never had to stop a scene um, specifically. Um, I feel like that I'm really careful about who I play with, and um, I, com I feel like that we have really good communication ahead of time, and people I play with tend to be really good at checking in, and um, I'm a pretty expressive person anyway, so I think people can read my body language, and um, and so, no, I haven't had to stop a scene. I feel like I've had, I've just been really lucky. I just, I have had really good experiences. I've had met really great tops. Um, and, and I'm not, like, the best communicator in the world either. This is just, it's so, like, hugely ther therapeutic for me to be able to talk about, like, the most personal thing, you know, the very personal things that are happening to your body and to be able to be forced to, uh, you know, explain, you know, what's going on to someone and what you want and what you don't want. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's so healthy. <laughs> well, what does being submissive mean to you? Ah, uh, well, I think um, really there's a phrase that I've been using lately, and um, it's it's basically this: it's letting someone else drive. It's just like you know, I I have I'm like the head of my household, you know, the boss of my life, you know, single parent, all those things. Um, sometimes you just want someone else to drive. <laughs> um, so it's it's really super basic like that, and. I'm kind of a submissive personality anyways. I really um, prefer to just defer to a stronger, more um, assertive personality. Um, and I feel like um, that just puts me in a safe place. And like I said, I'm really lucky, too. I, I encounter wonderful, beautiful people, and so I've never really been in a situation where I felt taken advantage of or that I couldn't, you know, um, 
change the direction of a situation if I felt like I needed to. You know, I and I see you as uh, this powerful, amazing force and being in our community. How did you get to a place as a female, as someone who wants to play submissively into such a powerful, self-accepted, owning your sexual expression place? I... I swear, I think it just is about, for a woman, it's turning 40. <laughs> I just think that, like, once you're in your 40s, you're just like, this is the body I have. It is working great. And and also, I'm just really, I've really had a close look at my um, my genetics. Like, like I look at the um, older women in my family, and they're all, like, you know, 70, 80 years old, and they're still, like, running around like little birds, you know, just, like, high energy, get out of their way because they're going to do it right. They're going to do it, you know, right the first time. And, you know, just, you know, 10 times better than you can do it. So, like, I just took a look at the women in my family. I'm like, I have, like, a lot of energy, a lot of really strong health, you know, ahead of me. And, um, God, my body just I I I hate to cut you off, but we got to go to commercials. So stay with us. We have a few more minutes. I want you to share some kink tips with our listeners. We're going to be right back on A Little Kink Goes a Long Way on BoldBraveMedia.com with your host, Roxy Benson, and the very powerful, submissive Sherry. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia daly Lipe is a renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daily Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Welcome back to A Little Kink Goes a Long Way on boldbravemedia.com with your host, Roxy Benson, my powerful submissive guest sherry is going to answer a question that i believe all of us need to answer for ourselves sherry what does your sexual expression mean to the woman you are now um uh you know i think it's it's really ba- it's really basic it's just about um i'm life is short and we have these moments that we're in right here and right now and i just really feel like time is precious and like living each moment to the fullest and being like really centered and focused in my body and appreciating my body and loving my body and loving my sexual self and um i've just come to that place and I'm just so blessed with what I have and I just feel so grateful and I just, and my sexual being is just the place where you can manifest that. It's, it's the place where you get to be the most real, truest, deepest, darkest part of yourself. And it's, it's just such a beautiful place. And, and I just learned to love that place in myself and I like to share it. And I love to hear about other people's experiences with it. And I love to hear about other people's sex lives and, what excites them and turns them on and, um, and just share that. It's just, it's a, just a positive, beautiful way to feel alive. It's just about feeling alive and just riding this planet, <laughs> you know, in this human body. It's just, it's yeah. amazing. <laughs> and yeah. would you say that if I asked you, do you practice sacred, honorable kink? How would you answer that question? Um, I'm not sure. Um, I think I would have to ask you like a, a little bit more about like what that means to you. Um, the word sacred to me like uh, has a spiritual connotation. I'm um, an atheist, so like I kind of I think of things in terms of like psychology and and physiology and like chemistry and like I think a lot about like what are these activities doing to my body and my like brain chemistry and how is that 
how am I relating to that, like, psychologically? And, you know, how is, like, my past and, and you know, um, affecting, like, where that's bringing me now and, you know, body experience and sensory experience. So, um, you know, I'd have to, I'd love to have that conversation. That'd be really interesting and, in, um, you know, getting your perspective on it and seeing how it relates because it all relates. Well, athe- some atheists I've met are the most spiritual people I know. Um, do I you think have so an, too, in a, do in a do way. Do you have an inner really guidance? Do you have an again. inner voice that's guiding you? Do you have an inner guidance system? Yeah, yes, yeah. The, uh, yeah. You're, well, for me, I feel like my solar plexus tell me just about everything. I feel like I have pretty good instincts and when they're wrong I can usually look at and go hmm, yeah okay I, I I see how I you know was guided to you know how these feelings guided me in these certain directions and yeah I listen to my gut instinct somebody told me that a long time ago um, about about raising kids just follow your guts people will tell you all these things there's all this information all this sensory output out there but really just what is your gut telling you and I go with that and and it's it guides me. I have a great life. I mean, yes, you do. You know, You're a powerful my, woman. my problems are cupcakes <laughs> compared to a lot of people. I, I'm, I'm grateful for everything that's going on in my world. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> As a submissive, what was a toy or tool that someone used on you that you were surprised and you said, I didn't think you could pervert that item and then tell them how it was used we got to make it quick because we're going to end. So. Uh, uh, somebody saw, uh, tied me to a table and sawed uh, a eucalyptus tree over my face. Uh, I had safety goggles on for the beach. Get, uh, <laughs> you know, sawdust in my, in my eyes, <laughs> which I was grateful for. <laughs> um, That's just interesting. Quickly, that, was the most, that was the most unusual thing I could think of. Really. That is unusual. <laughs> okay, thank you, sweetie, for coming to our show and for being the powerful, you, dynamic woman you are. You've listened to A Little King Goes a Long Way on BoldBraveMedia.com and come back next week and listen to Roxy Benson as your host and I will bring more fun, more fun trans experience next week. This has been A Little Kink Goes a Long Way with Roxy Benson. Tune in each week as Roxy will help you resurrect divine human relationships and truth. Here on A Little Kink Goes a Long Way. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.